Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer with, for and from St Catherine's. Uh, we're looking this week at things that Jesus did and come today to what is perhaps one of the best known stories of things that Jesus did. That is aside from his being born and his dying, those I guess are overall the best known stories. But in between that, of the things he did between being born and dying, then there is actually only one story which is in all four Gospels. Okay, Jesus clearing the temple is in all four Gospels, but they tell it quite differently, put it in a different part of the story, and anyway, I'm counting that in the dying bit. So, so aside from the last week of his life, from the first week of his life, this is the only story that all four Gospels record. So it's got to be an important one. It's got to be an important one. It's one that you know very well indeed. And as ever with well-known stories, uh, whether they're Jesus's or anybody else's, uh, we have a tendency not to listen to them very well. Our brain just says, yeah, know that, know that, know that, and pass on. But let's listen carefully. Let's attend to it. This, I think, is an important story. What is it? Well, we'll find out. Join me for our opening prayer. And on to our reading. I've gone for John's version, for John chapter 6. I've gone for John's version because th there's a real chance that this is being written for us by someone who was actually there. Somebody who, who experienced this hands-on, quite literally hands-on. More of that perhaps as we go. It is. This is the story. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the Feast of the Jews, was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered, six months' wages wouldn't buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, son of Peter's brother, said to him, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they amongst so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Jesus took the loaves, and when he'd given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves, Left by those who'd eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. And when Jesus realised that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again up to the mountain by himself. I have here five bagels out the freezer and two tins of sardines. That's pretty much it. Okay, it wouldn't have been bagels that Jesus had, but they'd have been like pita breads, really. Sort of single, single portion breads and two small fish, I'm guessing, would be do pretty well for a couple of tins of sardines. So this, this that I'm holding is what that boy had. Not bad actually for a, for a boy, That's that, that would keep him going, uh, give him some to share. Maybe he was sharing it with his family, I don't know. Maybe a bagel or two each. But, but this is it. This is what Jesus had to work on. And the interesting thing in the way that John tells us this story is that Jesus 
had already worked out what he was going to do. So when he says, how, how much money do you think it would cost to, to feed all these people? He's, he's kind of playing with them because he's playing with the way that they think. That's the way that they think, oh my goodness, we couldn't, we couldn't do it. In fact, in the other Gospels, Jesus says, how are we going to provide for them? And, and they, they're the ones who immediately go to the subject of money and say, we couldn't afford it. And Jesus says, well, what have you got? And they say, this. <laughs> and that's fine. Now, when we have a story of Jesus doing something that he is in control of, then He's teaching. He's making a point. John, in fact, calls this a sign. This isn't a healing. This isn't Jesus responding to something that's gone on in front of him. This is Jesus taking control. He's doing this because he's making a point. So you've got to really think of it like a parable. It's really the parable of the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus knew that this big crowd was coming his way, and he thinks, OK, let's, let, let's, let's teach them something. So what... What is he teaching? What do we learn from it? Actually, there are lots of things going on here. Uh, one is that he works with what he's got in front of him. He didn't take his own five loaves and two fish. In fact, he didn't take anything. Remember yesterday's story, Jesus sending his disciples out and saying, don't take anything with you. Don't take any money. Don't take any spare clothes. Da -da 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 -da. Jesus sends them out with nothing. Jesus goes out with nothing. He's planning to feed, feed a huge crowd and he goes out with nothing because he's planning to work with what he's given. And that, I think, is in itself a great thing to learn about working with God. We work with what God has given us. I know as a parish priest, that's really fundamental. You move into a new church, you work with what God has given you. And God has given me, you lovely people to work with. You're my five loaves and two fish. I don't know if I've done much with it, but there we go. Jesus works with what is there. And he takes it from a boy. He takes it from, in a sense, the least important person. I'm sure other people there had food. There's nothing, no suggestion that that boy's the only person who's got any food out of 5,000 people. But it's a child. It's somebody who isn't terribly important in the terms of their society. And Jesus takes his offering and he provides. But he doesn't provide anything showy. He doesn't suddenly take you know, five loaves and two fish and turn it into a fantastic banquet. Everybody gets some bread and some fish. It's basic. It's basic, as, as has, has been put in our text chat. It's Jesus is meeting their need, not the wants. He's not doing anything flashy, but what he's showing us is that God can take what we offer, whatever it is, no matter how meagre, and meet our needs with it. There's lots of other things that we could pick up from it. I do encourage you to continue to ponder this story. It's rich with purpose and well worth the pondering. One detail of this story, which Matthew, Mark and Luke highlight, but John doesn't, is that this entire miracle takes place in the hands of the disciples. Jesus takes the five loaves and two, two fish. He thanks God for them, which would have just been a, a, a regular grace, I think, just a, a prayer of thanksgiving for food. And every time we see Jesus at a meal, he does that. And then he hands the bread and the fish to the disciples to distribute to the people. 
So the multiplication doesn't happen in Jesus' hands. It happens in their hands. And I think that's really important. I think that shows us something about the way of God. God is doing a thing amongst us. This isn't a Jesus miracle. This is a disciples of Jesus miracle. And if we see ourselves as Jesus' disciples, and I guess if you're watching this, then, then you do see yourself as Jesus' disciple. Our role in this isn't to feed us. Our role in this is to pass the food from Jesus to the people. That's the point in the process where the work of God happens. Because they continue handing it out. And as they continue to hand it out, they continue to have enough to hand it out. Our role as Christians isn't to see that our needs are met. Our role as Christians is on Jesus' behalf to see that other people's needs are met. And that needs to be the basis of our prayer. Our prayer needs to be outward looking and outward working. We pray together for the coming of God's kingdom and that's how God's kingdom works. This story is how God's kingdom works. Join me in the prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Couldn't help smile when I get, came to give us this day our daily bread and fish, if you like fish. Amen. Anyway. Before we finish, there's one more feature of this story which I think needs to be mentioned, and, and that's the leftovers. That's the leftovers. Twelve baskets full. I don't know what size basket is. I'm guessing it's whatever baskets that the disciples had in their fishing boats that they put their fish in. So there's probably a reasonable size, what do you think? It's full of plastic containers. Twelve baskets full. Twelve baskets full of leftovers. I don't know what they did with them, but I'm supposing that they were also used to feed other people. I can't imagine they turned them into bread and butter pudding <laughs> or something like that. So the provision that Jesus makes isn't just for, for, for those present. It's, it's for those beyond those who are present. And, and that's got to be part, that's part of this parable. That's part of, of this reality of the way the kingdom of God operates. God doesn't just provide for the people who come to us, the people in front of us, but, but provision beyond that. And let nothing be wasted. God's kingdom isn't a wasteful kingdom. It's a, it's a generous kingdom. It's generous with basics. It's not smoked salmon and caviar. Uh, it's, it's basic provision, but it's generous basic provision. And 12 is a very significant number for Jews. It's because it's the number of the tribes of Israel. So there, are, there is a, a message here that all God's people are provided for. And we're part of that. Our hands, our hands are part of that. God is doing his work through our hands. That's amazing. We'll look at something else tomorrow. In fact, tomorrow we'll look at what happened after Jesus came back down the mountain. <laughs> something, something quite unexpected happened. Join me for daily prayer tomorrow. For now, join me in the prayer, the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen.